welcome viewers i was talking about the poem upon westminster bridge a petrol can sonnet by william wordsworth in my previous lecture i have already talked about the poet and the poem and today i would like to continue my discussion specifically on the sister part what is sister you know that in a petrarchan mode of sonnet there is a division of octave and the sister octave consists of the first eight lines of a sonnet whereas the sister consists of the last six lines of the poem so here you see there are six lines 1 2 3 4 5 6 so right from line number 9 the sister part opens with you see that the lines are arranged in a rhyme scheme and the sister part introduces the new rhyme scheme i have already talked about the rhyme scheme of the poem as a b b a a b b a c d c d c d so the sister part introduces the new rhyme scheme that c d c d c d why steep steep rhymes with hill steep rhymes with deep so c hill rhymes with will here uh, d and uh, d and acclip rhymes with still c, uh, will rhymes with still D and F leaf D and stem here C. So the rhyme scheme of the sister part is C D C D C D. So this is all about the new rhyme scheme of the sister part in this sonnet. Now thematically speaking, we should remember that the first part or the first a uh, part of the sonnet that is uh, generally known as the octave introduces the scenic beauty of the city of london that i have already told you last day and today you should remember that the sister speaks of the poet's mind that the poem celebrates the mood of tranquility so now let us come to the text you should follow your uh, uh, lesson with your textbook Now let's read the poem. Never did sun more deeply steep in his first splendor, valley, rock, or hill. So never did sun. You know, sun is also a beautiful image used in this poem. That the sun seems to beautifully steep. The sun seems to uh, steep means here. You know, the sun's rays. the sun's rays are coming or falling right straight from the sky above or overhead in his first splendor so the sun has been personified and that's why the sun uh, showers the uh, morning light or the rays splendor splendor that is the glitter uh, of light and that overwhelms the light overwhelms valley rock or hill so valley rock or hill are the three dimensions of nature and you should keep in mind that the poet has celebrated the beauty of the city landscape as if they are the uh, the, the city landscape seem to be the elements of nature or the parts of nature and here the countryside images as valley rock or hill have been used here though the poet has uh talks about the scenic beauty in the early morning of the city of london now let's uh, continue never saw i never felt a uh, calm so deep so have calm you know that the uh, calm or quietness of uh, the city of london at the early uh, morning that the theme the uh, atmosphere seems to be calm and in my previous class i told you that the air seems to be smokeless and the sky is bare and the atmosphere is uh, silent calm and bare so here calm means quiet or uh, without any noise there is no din and bustle as usually we uh, come across 
in the daytime but in the early morning we miss the calm noisy atmosphere the din and bustle of the city life of like london and the poet here stands um, the poet here views the beauty of the city uh, from the london uh, from the westminster bridge that is over the river now the calmness and the quietness of the atmosphere is uh, so impressive that the poet has is moved by its majesty next continue uh, the river glides at its own sweet will the river river is also another part of nature if i ask you that what is the river used in this uh, poem the name of the river is obviously it is thames you know that london is situated on the bank of the river thames and many poets especially the romantic poets have also idealized the river london in many writings the river glides at its own sweet will here the river is also another personification the river has been personified as moving or flowing straight away that gliding that is means the motion continuous motion without any uh, hindrance and that's why the river seems to glide at its own sweet will so river flows uh, uh, continuously and smoothly and that's why it seems to glide next uh, let's continue dear god has used notice the exclamatory mark the poet has used an exclamation what is exclamation an exclamation is an address uh, made to any object of nature or any idea or phenomena that the poet passionately addresses to so as the poet addresses to god that he is uh, so much moved by the scenic beauty of london in the early morning light and that's why the poet says dear god the very houses seem athlete the very houses seem athlete as you see also another personification so in this poem we should remember that the the poet use of the figurative language especially the figures of speech uh, is very conspicuous so in the same line we feel we, we, uh, we notice the use of exclamation as well as the personification so her houses uh, seem to uh, uh, athlete the very houses means the houses of the city of london are not actually athlete but the occupants of the houses are athlete so here Uh, the house is asleep and the atmosphere is uh, noiseless and uh, there is uh, calmness or uh, the quietness uh, that is uh, so deep so impressive in order to move the poet and uh, the reader let's continue and all that mighty heart is still lying is lying still and all that mighty heart so this is a very important phrase uh, the poet has used Uh, a phrase that is uh, noteworthy that a mighty heart as if london seems to be a giant and uh, the heart of the town we say heart of the country you know that london is the capital capital uh, city of uh, the country so london is uh, this as the heart that seems to be powerful and mighty as a uh, giant uh, city is a uh, lying still so lying means the uh, um, entire uh, city seems to uh, be asleep in the early morning so this is all about the sixth part of the poem i hope that you have understood it if you have uh, any um, 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 notice in the poem you will see that uh, the poet has used a number of figure figures of speech uh, such as uh, the exclamation and the personification and here we also see the personification of uh, the sound uh, the river the river and uh, houses so what is personification personification is a uh, you know uh, the figure of speech in which uh, there is the 
presentation of non living being as it uh, seems to be the living being so there is the attribution of the living characteristics to non living or non human being so here we see that the elements of nature the sun the river and the houses are attributed with the human feeling as if with the actions of human activity now you also see the use of uh, the exclamation that uh, the poet makes an exclamation to god because he is uh, moved by the majesty of the city of london and the um, poet has uh, depicted the city of london as if uh, the city seems to be the part of nature so landscapes are uh, viewed as the diamonds of dimensions of country landscape so you know the title of the poem is of the poet mr bridge so the poet has used uh, lines a few lines and how many lines are used in this poem obviously it is a sonnet and that's why we can um, uh, definitely categorize the poem as a poem of 14 lines and it's the sonnet what type of the sonnet is it it is the petrarchan mode of sonnet so in this poem you have the division of the octave and the sixth the octave consists of the first eight lines of the poem whereas the sixth part uh, introduces the new rhyme schemes consisting of the six lines so i have confined my discussion uh, to the uh, thematic uh, descriptions as well as, as well as the structural pattern of the poem rhyme scheme of the poem and certain figures of speech used in this poem uh, uh, the sister uh, introduces the mood of the poem what is the mood of the uh, poet as the mood of the poet is tranquil so hope that you have understood the poem and you should uh, give focus on the text and the textual analysis the line by line textual analysis that is, that is very much important and the mood of the poem the poem as a nature poem of an westminster poet as a petrarchan mode of sonnet so uh, that is all about uh, today's class hope that you have understood the poem well and before the closer of the poem i would like to give you a few uh, multiple choice questions as your home assignment you will try your best to answer and you can comment uh, uh, in the you can answer in the comment box thank you all Bye